Hi, this is George Scaff, Vice President of Marketing at Trackable Systems. We're here at the Uptime Institute to feature our CloudRack C2, our latest product, uh, innovative product that is a breakthrough in density and configuration for cluster computing. This is Lior. Hi, I'm Leo Pastor. I'm System Engineering Manager for Rackable Systems. Okay. I'm going to talk about CloudRack today. Okay, so tell me about the CloudRack. So when we came up with the design for CloudRack, we want to address certain problems that were available in the data center. Let's start with stranded power first. The stranded power is the amount of power that is available at data center that's not fully utilized. So you pay more actually to bring power to data center and you don't utilize fully to power your servers. And I'm going to let Leo talk about what we've done with the innovative new technology that we introduced called Power XE to solve the, power, the stranded power problem. So what we did to deal with the stranded power problem in the data center is really allow our customers to use either single phase or actually triple phase or three phase power brought directly into the cabinet. And what we do in the cabinet, specifically with three phase, is we bring in the AC power into conversion models that basically convert from AC to 12 volt DC power. By converting from in one shot from AC to 12 volt DC power, we actually have a very, very efficient conversion. We actually bring 12 volt DC power directly into the servers. Because nowadays you can actually get the motherboards with 12 volt DC input only. And this is really allowing us huge efficiency gains because we eliminate DC cards or AC power supplies off the servers. So if you have a cabinet with 80 or 120 servers, there's no power supplies because they're not needed anymore. That's how we gain all these efficiencies with the cloud rack. That's one of the ways we solve the issues with the stranded power. So the second issue that we have is what we call the second watt problem. And the second watt problem meaning that for every watt that you consume at the server level, you have to consume another watt, another watt for cooling. And that's really a shame because you really don't need to consume one full watt for cooling. So to handle that, I'm going to let Leo talk about as well how we do it from an efficiency standpoint. So um, together with solving the issue of stranded power, what we really do is we bring up the efficiencies of the, of the cloud rack and also of the trays in the cloud rack to very, very high level. So by doing the single conversion from AC power to 12 volt DC, we're actually running conversion at 99% efficiency because it's, it's a very, very efficient process. What we also do in the cloud rack itself, if you look at the tray itself, there's one thing that's missing. What's missing is a power supply. There is no power supply because we bring in direct 12 volt DC into the cloud rack. By doing that, we again bring up the efficiencies of the, of the cloud rack. Another thing that we do in order to solve this problem of the second watt, which is basically 50% of the power coming into the data center is wasted. What we do is we actually eliminated any fans from the tray of the cloud rack. We eliminate fans from the trays and we actually have centralized fans and cooling in the back of the cabinet. That centralized fan cooling is actually doing a very good job at creating a very uniform airflow in the cabinet. And what it's also doing is it's doing that very efficiently. Efficiently meaning that we actually run at relatively low speeds for the fans and the fans actually also have a way to detect the uh, temperature of the air so they can actually adjust the speed of the fans to the temperature of the air. And we also have these fans enable us to run the cloud rack at actually up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit in the data center with inlet temperature. 40 degrees Celsius. We don't mean that you have to run your data center 104 degrees Fahrenheit, but what it means is that you can run the data center at 70 Fahrenheit, 75, 80. And what it really means is that you can actually raise the temperature of the chilled water coming into your data center. And by doing that, you can save a lot of money. So that's really how we deal with all these issues of the second watt and efficiencies. We're also talking about being ultimately very reliable. So if you look at this tray, for example, as Leo mentioned, we've taken care of all the moving parts. There's no power supply anymore, there are no fans anymore, 
And with hard drives, if I use SSD drives, I've animated pretty much all the moving part on a tray, which makes the server very, very reliable. By the way, these are very modular drives that you can remove very easily for ser serviceability if you ever need to. To talk about serviceability, one of the things we've done is if this tray was in a cabinet like this, where you have multiple trays in a cabinet, you can connect, you can basically take a tray out, slide it back in, and in order to service the trays, we can actually, because the trays are running DC power, it's very, very easy for us to basically plug in the power from the front, pull the tray out, disconnect it from power in the back. The tray is still going to be running, all the servers are still going to be running, and then you can service the components on the tray itself, as well as serviceability and front access to all Ethernet ports, remote management ports, LEDs, all that stuff that you really need to run the servers and manage them uh, on site. Now, all what we've talked about brings power, efficiency, and cost saving to the customer. Cost saving because you're really reducing the amount of power that you're spending, both from uh, eliminating the stranded power and running with fans in the back that self-adjust themselves depending on the ambient temperature and data set. Customers also wanted ultimate configuration and video options. So with this, we're offering the ultimate video options on the server that we have, server trays. Do you really want to talk about this? Yes. So, so Rackable has been really priding itself for the last 10 years in, in building build-to-order solutions, or we like to call it uh, actually customized to the customer's uh, workload. So in the Cloud Rack, what we really did is we, we took a one new tray with, with a uh, power supply in the back and what we're really able to do is customize the tray. So in this case we have a tray with three Hyperphone servers, dual, dual socket, quad core, can be Intel or AMD, uh, you can customize CPUs, memory, and in this case every server actually has two large form factor hard drives. So this is a very good configuration for someone that does search, or caching or video streaming or something like that. But a lot of customers say, hey, we don't need hard drives, we can just boot off our network. So we can actually put six servers on the tray. We also have configurations that require lightweight configurations like a desktop class servers. So we can actually eliminate some of these hard drives, put smaller motherboards on the tray and smaller hard drives. So really the, the bottom line is that the Cloud Deck tray is highly configurable and you can really match the customer and the end user workload with the trays that we have here.